my time probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is a start though, right? We're here to be inspired. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Miss Sarah Merritt, um, who I adore on a very personal level. Uh, but she is an Ames, Iowa native with a passion for art and education. She received her Bachelor of Arts with an individual concentration in art, sexuality, and aesthetic perception form from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. You did spend freshman year at the University of Northern Iowa with me, but we didn't that. She earned a Master of Fine Arts in painting from San Francisco Art Institute, and she's currently serving as the Education Specialist with the Ryman Gardens at Iowa State University. Uh, Sarah has been teaching art on the side in some capacity since she was 15, and she will likely never stop. And she's here to talk to us about chromophilia. Property possessed by most cells of being of, of staining readily with appropriate dyes, or in a more simplified form, from the Greek love of color. For astrophysicists, color is elemental. The gaps in our spectrum reveal shadows of all the elements in our cosmos. And Neil deGrasse Tyson said recently that there are many layers in the form of, of beauty. I am in love with color, but as Umberto Eco wrote, color is not an easy matter. And he's right. It's a perceptual property of energy. We cannot touch it, but in the space between us, tension compounds and heat is produced. The relationship between color and movement is not visual, but physical. Color is a vibrating entity, like a photon is a, not a point, but a vibrating wave. It acts on bodies like a neurological disorder. And as an artist, I have tried to contain color, control it, guide it, make of it something small and portable, name it like it belongs to me, but in and of itself, color cannot always be so managed. It breaks apart in rough dyskinesia. And this is my love and fear of color, that I'm pregnant with it, that, and I'm pregnant with my incontrollable movement of my own flaws. Pink is the only tint of a color that we regularly call by name. It used to be a boy's color, red and white, masculine. But pink, like sexuality, is not a thing. It moves. It bulges and it's hot like sex and sometimes like violence. Red is hard. Fire, blood, love, and revolution. Physically warmer than blue light, red light is a district. It's a place for material obsessions for feeling the vibration of heartbeats. The longest of the wavelengths, red focuses behind the eye, behind the retina, and appears forward in our vision. So it is the universal color. Most cultures have a name for it, and it appears right after black and white. But the thing that is color, in philosophical terms, is not an object. It is the void contained within that which acts as vessel that which presences, push forth, pushes forth and becomes something other, something powerful and pulling. Like darkroom photography, things come to light in red and die drowning in it. And this is my respect for the color red. Of the body, wet and messy, a certain sign of damage. Orange, always warm, is the action of fire. Arcing and sparking between bold and bright, the color of earth, Orange may be the new black to some, but it is also the louder brown. It yells warnings. It sounds like deep bells, peppers our food, and it excites us to bravery. Yellow is the trickster for me. Hyper visible, yellow cannot hide, but the truth of it is hard to find. It effervesces somehow always between closer to orange and closer to green than to its actual self. And because of this, I find it dirty. It dirties easily. It's also the most popular color for happiness. And it is the, sh the only shade of which we find unpleasant. Black and yellow make us sickly green. Like I said, it dirties. Sulfurous. It, it is pushing. It's a sign of infection. In our current culture, we have defined 
Immortality is a preservation of the body in its physical form, apart from signs of aging, apart from decay, and this manifests through keeping the body fresh and healthy for as long as you possibly can in appearance. But those conjecture, there are others that conjecture that the body's information and its even very, very basic codes can remain in perpetuity. Fluorescent green is indispensable, quite literally, with a pigment with a half-life of 1,600 years. But between the earth and the sky, green exists on the same plane as human beings. We are equals and as diverse. There are more variations of green than any other color, and it speaks. It can be misunderstood, and it can be confused with its complete opposite by the color blind. But without it, we cannot breathe. Vast blue. When I was, six, when I, when I was 17, I finally came to terms with a breast deformity that tested my already awkwardly developing sense of self, calling into question my definition of femininity and nurturing a penchant for the grotesque, writhing from depression, a blue disorder. The writer William Gass marveled at the word blue that so many soft definitions arise around this word, the way lint collects. The brain does this too. We cover our concepts like fish with nets of, with clouds of it, net, excuse me. I covered myself with the dark and muddy colors and with the invisibility and then that power found art. Yet, that, yet uh, blue is also all encompassing and very elusive. It's most popular favorite color, but the blue, the, the ocean is not blue, the sky is not blue. Um, blue lights appear blurry and penetrating at night because of the proportionate concentration of our of the light sensing cones in our eye. 64% of those cones code for blue lights, or code for red light, 32% code for green, and only 2% code for blue. So we see blue in intense blue light with great concentration, but are unable to focus it. This is chromatic aberration. And blue oddly flows to the front seat. The Mo'o and Anya, is a Polynesian legend, a serpent goddess transitioning between the forms of a human and a dragon. And what we present to the world is at once real and also the illusion of the illusion of light. At the root of what I do, my relationship to color is my relationship to my body in all of its external forms and its internal workings. And Black, like the flocking starlings. 